Hey, welcome to Dizzy Stitches. This is episode 2, and it's a little after 10 on Thursday, uh, August 16th. I'm doing a crochet tag, and I got this from uh, Petra from the Sosa family, and she got it from uh, Ella from No Catchy Name. Their links are below, so you should go check out their channels. Oh my gosh, guys, I just cannot believe it. I mean, my kids are all in bed, and they went to bed a little bit before 9. So, back to the crochet tag. I think it's a good idea because uh, you get to know a little about a little bit about me and your other podcasters out there and um, what they create and yeah, I've been meaning to post this for a while. If I keep looking down, it's because I've written down what I wanted to say. Because every time I get on camera, I get stumped. And, <laughs> yeah. So, for the last few days, I've been kind of busy. Um, you know, with back to school, getting the girls back into school. And um, I've been doing some uh, spring cleaning. And organizing. And trying to organize, you know, like, my craft area where I want all my yarn. Even though it's not spring cleaning, because it's almost fall. But, so it would be considered summer cleaning? Trying to get ready for this uh, consignment sale coming up. It's a kid's consignment sale. Where you get, like, these, uh... Uh, hold on, I think. <laughs> Anyways, I signed up uh, for a first-time consigner. And we'll be getting rid of a lot of baby clothes. And the gear is just so overwhelming. Don't even let me get started on it. <laughs> I've got bags and bags. And you're only like limited maybe a thousand items. <laughs> so, if you have kids and you're looking for a deal, you know, back to school deals, whatever. Look up consignmentmommies.com um, and look for a sale in your area. We all know that kids are very expensive and I'm always looking for a deal. You know, and if you sign up as a consigner, you get a pass before the public. And these are gently used items. Um, most of them look brand new, and most items are like 70% 70 off, 70 off retail. That's great, isn't it? Okay, well, uh, back to my crochet tag. Number one, how long have you been crocheting? See, I'm not a knitter. I'm just a beginning or I'm a beginner at crochet I've only been crocheting since March but I've also been doing intermediate intermediate patterns or projects yeah I love a little challenge <laughs> me I'm bad about starting stuff and not finishing them but with crochet I, I'm hooked. Don't hate. <laughs> Appreciate. 
I know, I'm silly when I'm not nervous. <laughs> anyway, crochet, it relaxes me, and you know, it, it passes time, and I like stuff, making stuff that I cannot find in the store. Number two, where do you crochet? Wherever I'm most comfortable, really. Um, mostly it's on my couch. Occasionally I take it with me um, when I'm visiting my mom. Just to show her my new projects and stuff. She supports my craft. I love my mom. She also went through a big crafty stage at my age. Crafty stage at my age. <laughs> she was in the flower arranging and um, making wreaths. And she, uh, she sews occasionally still. She don't make wreaths anymore, but there used to be wreaths hanging around the house all the time. She made this uh, really cute Minnie Mouse uh, dress for uh, Andy. She, she sewed it and... I mean, it was so cute. Number three. When do you crochet the most? Anytime that I have time. During the night, I'm usually busy, you know, trying to get the boys on a routine, you know, girls on back to school routine, bath, you know, dinner, bath, bed. And then after that, I'm usually tired because it's like really late to me. <laughs> and it's starting to get late here too also, but I wanted to pop on here and, and post my new episode. But at night, you know, I, I can't really crochet at night because, yeah, I'm, I'm tired and... My kids wear me out during the day. Um, morning time would probably be morning, mid, morning, like brunch time. Excuse me. It's probably around the best time. Maybe early afternoon. Number four. What is your favorite hooks? I believe I only have Boyd's from Walmart can't really say what your favorite hooks are if you've only tried one kind. Remember, I'm still a beginner at this, so I'm learning about all the different types of yarn and the hooks. I've heard other podcasters talk about Susan Bates and Touche Crochet. The Touche Crochet hooks are like really, really pretty and very unique. But I'm not really that picky, as long as they crochet fine and get the job done. <laughs> Some like to uh, get where it's hard to slide your hook. Um, I just clean them and make sure they're dry and I just start crocheting again. Number five. What's your favorite brand of yarn? I love all yarn. I'm not too picky. If it's if it's soft and I love the colors, I will buy it. The variegated stuff really pops out to me. I haven't tried a lot of fibers yet, just mo mainly acrylics and cotton. I haven't really even tried wool yet because I always hear people being allergic to it. And it's you can't just throw it in the wash. But, you know, some wool, from what I heard, is, is soft. And I'm, when I think of wool, I think of it, it's scratchy. I just bought my first knit crate. Um, I had the, the, I did the flash sale where you get August's um, knit crate box. And also July's last month's box for 29.99 pl 
that's with shipping. I thought that was a deal. And a, de a deal breaker. I was on the fence about buying yarn online, but when I seen that deal flashing at me, I just couldn't refuse. <laughs> but I'm so super excited to try new yarns that I've never worked with before. I also have to say, my son, my three-year-old, he loves yarn too. Um... He likes this uh, ribbed um, blanket that I'm making for my uh, oldest daughter. I'm not looking at any patterns. I'm not looking at any tutorials. Um, I just kind of just did it with stitches I've learned. He has autism and uh, I don't know. Sounds uh touch is very different for them but when he touches the yarn he'll go like this across it and he likes the texture of it who doesn't he really 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 likes that baby burnett polyester ugh. polyester blend yarn course I made him a baby blanket with it and he snuggles he snuggles with it and I'll go to his face and he'll I'll be like it's so soft and he'll go <laughs> number six favorite things to crochet baby garments I like making baby clothes and props I would like to start my own bit of photography you know newborn photography baby photography one year cake smash you know uh, business I would like to crochet my own items and take these pictures I made a bunch of crafts for my um, my uh, my youngest's one year cake smash I'll have to uh, post a picture or something somehow <laughs> still learning about v video recording also and YouTube I didn't learn how to crochet until after my baby my baby was was after one so I really like making baby stuff so I didn't get to make newborn stuff for him I have a baby girl cousin coming next month and I'm almost done crocheting for her I also like to crochet bun beanies you see me I'm most likely always in a bun they are super easy and convenient and I like making my own clothes. I like the new styles and colors in my closet. Otherwise, I'm a t-shirt and jeans type girl. And PJs. I could live in my PJs. I'll even go out into public in my PJs. I don't care as long as I'm comfortable. Number seven. How do you get ideas or inspirations? There is so many podcasters out there that make so many beautiful things. And I'm like, ooh, I want to make that. Or I'll start a project without much thought. Like my uh, rainbow ribbed blanket. Or there's so many stitches to try new ones you know and then you could turn them into newer stitches and it goes on and on your basics pretty much can turn into different types of stitches and patterns with your imagination I'm just now 
starting to understand reading patterns. And I'm like thinking, well, what if I turn this particular stitch into another type stitch together and you can develop a new pattern? Number eight. How did you learn to crochet? YouTube and all the other awesome podcasters out there. Thank you so much. <laughs> all the other awesome podcasters out there um, that show off their stuff and do tutorials. They make it look so easy. And eventually it it is easy. Some went really fast and all you have to do is just be kind and rewind and after a while they don't seem so fast once you get those basics in your head you can crochet anything and I mean anything yarn bombing um, just anything you can just use your imagination on now it's gotten to me to the point where I'm starting to read patterns and starting to kind of understand them. Some of them are a lot easier than others. You know. How do you, uh, number nine. How do you store patterns? I usually write them down in a way that I can understand. I just have a little notebook you know just a few patterns but um mostly I'll just look in a book um I just bought one recently I have to put my books up high where the boys can't reach to them or they'll just try and rip out pages I've had a couple where they've already ripped out some pages but this is the book that I got. Um, I actually got it at Books A Million. Sorry, my eye itched. I'm getting tired. But it's the uh, Crochet One Skein Wonders. And it's by, or edited by Judith Durant and Edie Ekman. But... How cool is that? Only one skein. And I have a lot of yarns that I've only have one skein of that color. Okay, and number 10 is, do you have any other hobbies? My great grandma taught me how to sew, uh, uh, hand sew. Because I'm not good at the machine, but I'd like to uh, relearn because it was years ago. She, anyways, my grandma used to teach me how to do these iron-on transfers and so the little, um, little teeny cute patterns on them. I did it constant right after she died. And I just kind of put it down and then started to learn to crochet. But I would like to pick it up again. My great grandma was 94 when she passed. She just passed last year. She had Alzheimer's. But um, she used to, yeah, teach me how to uh, sew on to these iron on transfers with. Um, on tea towels and I was probably about around the age of eight or nine when I learned I've also made um, little hair little girls hair bows but I've only made one no I've made a few and I by the time I was done with those projects my daughters grew out of not liking hair bows anymore like I said with some of the projects I start a project and just doesn't stick with me 
like I said, also, I think in the last uh, question, I uh, also made crafts for my youngest's cake smash. Oh, it was so cute. I made or either bought everything in the picture, including the baby. <laughs> Not bought. I didn't make the cake, but I decorated it. Both my boys are really, really into Sesame Street. So, for his cake smash, it was Cookie Monster theme. I would like to keep going with that hobby and turn it into a newborn first birthday business, photography business, where I make these cute crochet little baby props little little teeny hats and diaper covers so anyways uh this was just a crochet tag about me and i want to thank all of my new subscribers for joining me and my returning subscribers welcome back Dang, I think I hear the baby. <coughs> so I'm just going to have to bid you good night. You guys have a really good rest of the week, and I'll see you next time.